Hello, everybody. We're really happy to be presenting at Consul Food, uh, the fifth international Consul Food. And our topic is solar cooking as higher education strategy for its global engagement, responsibility, and repair, collaborating for a better world. Uh, there are four of us here, and we would like to introduce ourselves to, um, to get us started. Um, I'd, I'd like to first introduce Jennifer Gasser and Mary Buchenik, who will say a little bit about themselves and the Solar Education Project. Uh, would you like to go first, Mary? Uh, sure. Um, okay. Hello, everyone. I'm Mary Buchenik. Um, I am one half of what you uh, might know as the Solar Sisters. Um, working with my partner, Jennifer, we uh, created Solar Education Project. and. Um, our goal is to uh, just infuse education into all aspects of, of the promotion of solar cooking so that it is a, a very cross-curricular, multidisciplinary approach, a holistic approach um, that we're not just teaching about solar cooking, but we're teaching through solar cooking. Um, Jennifer? Hello. Um, yes, we're, we do a lot of education programs and they are wide and varied. And I think a lot of what we do um, extends outside the classroom. And that is one of my favorite portions of dealing with uh, solar cooking. And that's uh, one of my favorite parts of this collaboration is that extending the education to be practical and to um, use the knowledge that they've learned outside the classroom is significant. And this project has that potential and so much more. Thank you, Mary and Jennifer. And I am Riyadh Bahur. I teach global studies at Sacramento City College. And um, I met Mary several years ago at another solar cooking conference. Um, and I was, during the beginning of COVID, I um, was kind of looking at what the Global Studies Program could do um, and, and what I could do. And I, I wanted to rebuild a solar cooker. So I reached out to Mary for some advice um, and we started talking and this is how, and this is what it, it led to Global Makers. But the Global Studies Program is basically, um, it takes a critical approach to global studies, looking at the world uh, through um, very a variety of lenses, culture, economics, politics, environment, uh, takes into account history, geography, and power imbalances. And we want our students to think critically about their role in the world and including what is their role in repairing the planet, identifying uh, problem and where problems and where work is needed and to repair the planet. So this Global Makers Project fits really neatly into, um, into that outlook. Um, and with me at Sac City College is Tom Capaletti, who is the director of the, the Makerspace. And so Tom will say a little bit about uh, himself and the Makerspace. Hi, everybody. Um, uh, thank you for having us. Um, I, yes, I work with Riyadh. Riyadh and I work at Sacramento City College now we're a community college. And then in the United States, a community college is an entry point for folks, typically two years, to kind of figure out a pathway in their lives. A very easy entry, very affordable. And what I do is we operate a lab called a makerspace. But a makerspace is open to all of our students to come in and learn what we call project-based learning. Um, it's a way to get empowered. Um, you may hear them called hacker spaces, fabrication labs, um, DIY do-it-yourself labs. I see in some schools for younger kids, they're called learning studios. And so it's a place for them to chop, cut, paste, glue, build, solder, use wood, use plastics. A lot of people know that they use modern technology like 3D printers things like that. But the really most important part is that students come together, work together, learn how to be nice together, and also learn to be good citizens, to grow um, and to develop skills, whether it's traditional tools, modern tools, and to use critical thinking to come together. And then with this project, we're really trying to imbue a sense of social responsibility, both locally 
um, and globally. What I would add here too is even before Global Makers, Tom and I had conversations about what does it mean, mean to make and is it only objects, right, that is made or can you make actually a better world? Can you make social justice or can you make community? And so this project really brought all of those things together, right? The people, students will be making objects, but they're also making repair and justice and, and community around the world. So we wanted to give you an idea of the Global Maker goals. And you probably picked up a little bit on already that for the Global Studies program, that this project, Global Makers, helps students and the community, because we're open to the community and all our events are open, um, help students expand their sense of global awareness and responsibility, um, gain a greater awareness of sustainability issues, both environmental, but also social and economic sustainability, and also enhance their duty to repair the planet and their communities. At a community college such as ours in California, I'd say the vast majority of our students are low income. It's an extremely diverse population. A lot of first generation students, um, first time in college students. And so we'd like to give them a pathway and an, a way of empowering them. Um, and also, again, like I mentioned earlier, um, a sense of social responsibility. We provide them with materials, um, all the tools you can imagine, we're, um, modern shop tools, traditional tools and very close one-on-one -on -one training. I think that this is, uh, represents our collaborative effort and we have had a true team approach here. Um, we've exchanged ideas, we talked about our individual goals and that leads us to our common and shared goals, which is really important as a collaborative team that we respect each other in what we're trying to infuse into the project. So I think that um, we're talking about making sure that we acknowledge the role of teaching and educators. And that's something that all of you do very, very well is educating me particularly um, what both inside and outside school looks like to you. And when uh, we reach the students, I think it's really important that they understand the impact upon them. So much of what we've done is organized to this point. We've had um, some of the videos and we've had some student involvement in the makerspace. And it was wonderful watching them make and uh, go through the process. And, and I would love to have heard their conversations outside of school when they went home and explained what they did that day. Um, you know, sharing ideas and making sure that we all get our goals accomplished is really an important feature of any program. The first thing you learn when you when you get into this group is, is people want to, to share their ideas, they want to share their knowledge. And so the idea of, of you know, trying to find a way to, um, to, to create another platform and to uh, actually call it a global maker program because we have makers all over the world who are making things not only in uh, facilities like Tom described, but in uh, backyards and in uh, you know community centers, uh, in their you know just in their homes, there are people who just have that maker mindset, that maker spirit, and so uh, you know maybe we could ask these people uh, if they would be interested in sharing step by step the process of how they make their particular oven or their uh, solar dryer or their retained heat basket. And then uh, if we could find someone who could competently put those video snippets together, then we could present these maker videos to people and uh, just kind of share this enthusiasm and this, this skill that we see literally around, around the world. And I have to say the, the people that um, that I contacted were enthusiastic and and absolutely agreed agreed to do this. So um, we have uh, various locations around the world, and also um, I tried to have uh, the different types of ovens represented. I would only add one thing to what um, Mary and Jennifer already related, or emphasize one thing, which is that we wanted to break down the walls or the boundaries between uh, the institutions of learning and where learning also happens, which is everywhere, right? We wanted uh, people around the world who weren't necessarily academics or in institutions to be, uh, in, but who are leaders in, in what they do to teach our students and for our students to be able to learn uh, from them.
from our perspective, the idea of, of making the product was important, but we also wanted people to see a different culture, a different part of the world, and, and to learn something about somewhere, someone who lives somewhere else. And so whether that's California or uh, Kenya or Haiti, uh, I felt it was important that, that the learning go beyond just how to make a product and that it become um, something that enriches a person in not just knowledge, but in their, you know, emotionally and socially and spiritually in some cases. So that, that was all part of the vision of, of having this global maker project. Absolutely. And, and that uh, kind of mutual support comes from the spirit of collaboration and knowing that as long as we're persistent, we will get somewhere. Um, and, and everyone is committed to that persistence. Um, you mentioned the product, right? And so one of the products we wanted to put together and offer to people around the world, not just our students, are videos explaining step-by-step step how each of the global makers creates their particular solar cooker or dehydrator or, uh, or basket, insulated basket cooker. And so for that, we were lucky the first year to have an AmeriCorps fellow. Um, we were lucky enough to have AmeriCorps, which is a, a national organization that brings in talented individuals to help uh, education in underserved areas, and we identified one of our um, lead student helpers who then became a full-time staffer, Michelle Zamora, and she was selected by AmeriCorps on a new project called Maker Fellows. This was a national project to take talented young folks and place them in community colleges and work on specific projects. And Michelle, um, she's extremely talented, and she was able to help with the organization, um, just the process of thinking about all this, editing the videos. And this was all when the pandemic hit. So there was a major shift in how, of course, as all of you know, how we all thought and taught and presented things. But this was a silver lining actually, because we were able to host these events as Riyadh um, will probably explain with Haiti and with Kenya. And even in the midst of the pandemic and the lockdown, we were able to bring a lot of folks together um, and, and start to shed some light on, on what we think is a very, very uh, important and ongoing uh, project. You can see from the picture here, uh, some of the happy participants from the live Zoom event. This student here happened to be the winner of the raffle of uh, an insulated basket cooker that our first uh, featured maker, Grace Chepkeme, um, featured in her video. And, and um, Mary and Jennifer graciously offered to, to send one as a prize. So that's a feature of all of our live Zoom events is to, to raffle off um, one of the cookers being featured. So these videos had to be made in two minute, three minute at the most segments and then sent individually and then reconnected and re-edited for brevity and clarity. And uh, so that, that whole process in itself is a, is a huge challenge. Absolutely. And then the other challenge also is how to make a video that features our maker, but also is easy to follow and replicate without losing any of the detail. Um, and so we we talked about the need to also have kind of um, an infographic or set of in written instructions to go along with the video. Um, so all of these are challenges that go along with the opportunity of getting something done and, and out there. Um, we also have uh, coming up, so as we mentioned, we started this during COVID um, as fully online, but we always had in mind that after COVID, with the reopening of the makerspace, that we would have our students in the makerspace uh, actually making these solar cookers or dehydrators um, and uh, potentially in contact with our global makers around the world in a kind of mentorship program um, in, the, in the SEC um, makerspace design challenge around solar cookers. 
So that's um, that's coming up. Uh, Tom and I are really excited about that. And um, once we we do that, then hopefully we can even expand beyond the SEC makerspace. Yeah, Riyadh, I would add that, you know, the idea of having a maker design challenge on our community college was to actually have students look at existing designs and maybe start to think about ways they may want to improve on them. And then we thought we'd have a fun kind of competition. As you know, we met on Earth Day um, this just this past April on campus and had a bunch of solar cookers out there. For all of the usefulness and excitement around the, the online and the virtual events, having those cookers out in, in real time, live on the quad, really turned a lot of heads. And students were like, whoa, what are you doing? You're making cookies, muffins. They were really excited. So there's nothing like being in person, but also we, we hope that the remote and the online stuff leads to those in-person um, encounters. And we, we even dream of having a resident and fellow, or, or um, a fellow, a maker in residence rather. Uh, one of our solar global makers hopefully will be able to come to Sac City one day and spend a week or two working directly with our students. So that's one of the opportunities we're kind of dreaming about. We wanted to end with uh, mentioning that, you know, collaborations are often uh, planting seeds for further collaboration. So uh, a couple ideas that came out of um, our Global Makers uh, project and as, as a result of people attending, were an idea to have a global solar cooking course. And here are some of the folks that um, we've been uh, conspiring with to make some of these things happen. Uh, Stefan Karnabach, Luther Kruger, Craig Berglund, and Sharon Clausen. Um, a solar cooking course that could be accessible by anyone anywhere in the world that could sort of give be a one-on-one -on -one course for people make, interested in and making solar cookers. And it would help us in our makerspace design challenge too, because we would offer it to our courses. And then perhaps one day, a solar cooker, cooker global maker challenge, right? Uh, hopefully ours at the local level will go well, and maybe we can expand that to include everyone in the world. Um, and if anyone out there is interested in either of these or has any other ideas and wants to get in touch with us, we're really open to expanding our circle of collaboration. I think with that, we're, we're a little bit past our 20 minute mark. So we'll, we'll all say goodbye and look forward to watching everybody else's presentations and interacting at console food. Bye-bye.